Hey, y'all. So we're back. I want to talk to you about this Google memo. So this Google memo, um, it's been all the news all the time. So let me give you a little background and, you know, as always, we'll discuss it. So Google on Monday fired a software engineer who wrote an internal memo that questioned the company's diversity efforts on arguing that low num the low number of women in technology positions was a result of the biological difference instead of discrimination. The memo called Google's ideological echo chamber angered many in Silicon Valley because it relied on certain gender stereotypes like the notion that women are less interested in high stress jobs because they are more anxious they are more anxious um, to rationalize the gender gap in the tech industry. The memo quickly spread outside the company as other Google employees railed against many of its assumptions. In a company-wide email, Google's chief executive said portions of the memo had violated the company's code of conduct and crossed the line by advancing harmful gender, gender stereotypes in our workplace. The memo said the company in a buy, um, put the company in a bind. On one hand, Google has long promoted a culture of openness with employees allowed to question senior executives and even mocked its strategy of internal forums. However, Google, like many other tech firms, is dealing with the criticism that it has not um, done enough to hire and promote women and minorities. One female engineer posted on Twitter upon reading the memo that she should consider leaving the company unless the Human Resources Department took action. In, a, in, an, in an email titled, One Word Matters, uh, Mr. Fihal said that he supported the right of employees to express themselves, but that the memo had gone too far. Uh, and it's been all the rage, it's been all over the news. Here's my take on, on this memo. So, number one, I do believe in, in freedom of speech. You guys know that. The Fowler Show is the epitome of freedom of speech. I say what I want. Rich Webster says what he wants. Tamara Estes can express her opinions, and she's an equal and valued member of our team here at The Fowler Show. The key word there is she's an equal and, and valued member of our team. She's no different than me. She is not. There's nothing different than me and Tamara. Besides the fact that she's a girl and I'm a boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? Um, and so I think, and, and, and I don't think that, you know, I, I don't, I, <laughs> there, there's nothing, there's no difference there. So I think this guy is clearly out of line. His memo is out of line. And I think we live in 2017. And that type of sexism and that type of language and that type of rhetoric is unacceptable. Uh, number one. It's uh, uncalled for, and it's so 1952 that it's unbelievable. Um, and I'm happy that Google made the, the, the choice and made the decision to kick that fool out of their company because they, he does not represent who Google is. And I, I, I also believe, and I could tell you this, that Google as a company uh, is making strides towards meeting diversity targets, because there's one thing that Silicon Valley is really trying, well, I can't say for all of Silicon Valley, but Google is trying very hard to diversify itself. They're trying to hire more African Americans, they're trying to hire more Hispanics, and it's something that we should commend them for. Um, and hopefully Silicon Valley can model what Google is doing um, in saying that, hey, listen, we do need more people of color. And here's why you need more people of color, because um, there was a recent study that came out by Nielsen, um, and Nielsen is the people that do TV ratings, and they talk about the power of multicultural millennials. Um, and multicultural millennials are people like me, right? And they talk about how multicultural millennials are the new are the new trendsetters. We are the people that set the trends for our generation. So when we buy something, our generation follows that trend, um, and, and and so that means. We should be the people that Silicon Valley's and other corporations look to when creating new products or when thinking about how to roll out a product, how we think, how we view things. And I think in boardrooms and C-suites all across, all across corporate America, we should be at the decision-making table. Sadly, for far too long, we haven't been. And that has been problematic. Um, so when guys like this prick write thing, these memos because their, you know, their white privilege is, they feel as though their white privilege is being encroached upon. Um, Boo-hoo for him.
You know, I, I mean, whatever, dude. It's, I'm sorry. You guys have had hundreds of years of white privilege. I'm sorry that now us minorities are saying, you know, we want a little bit of breathing room, you know, that we're, we're encroaching and women are encroaching and taking away an inch of the white privilege you've enjoyed for the past thousands of years. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. Grow up, dude. Um, and hopefully you enjoy your unemployment checks for the next couple weeks while you look for a new Silicon Valley job. I'm pretty sure you'll be hired pretty quickly.